let's take a picture. <gasps> oh no, do you dread those words every time you gather with family or friends? Well, we're gonna put an end to that. Today, I'm sharing a dozen tips to help you get ready for all those holiday photo ops. Hello and welcome to Dress For My Day. My name is Kay, if we have not met, and I am so glad you've come my way. Normally, I provide fashion and beauty tips for women over 50 so that we can show up for our day in a big way. But today we're turning our focus to all of those photo ops that we're gonna have during the holidays. But you know what I've, I've noticed is that in this day and age, any day is a photo op. Anytime you're with somebody, they have a camera in their hand, right? We all have a camera at our disposal, which means we are snapping pictures left and right. And you know what? You can be that person who says, oh no, don't take a picture of me. But honestly, that's not very becoming. <laughs> and we don't wanna be that woman. We just wanna be the woman who isn't hogging the limelight, but who is just ready to matter of factly, let's snap the pictures, get that out of the way, and move on with the celebration. So I want us to be ready for the camera because it's just a part, ladies, of our family celebrations, the times when we go out with friends these days. People are gonna to wanna to take a picture. And you know what I'm, we all need to remember too is that they're not looking for, you know, like a magazine cover. We're just wanting to snap pictures of our gatherings, of, our, of the love that we share with each other, right? The fellowship that we're having, the joy that is in the moment. And so if, we, if I'm that woman who says, oh no, you can't take a picture of me, that saps the joy from the moment. It causes friction. And instead, I want to be that woman who very easily says, okay, and strikes a pose. So I want you to be that woman too. So let's get going with those tips. Tip number one is do a little homework. And that's what we're doing right now. You know, doing a little homework, spending a little time in front of the mirror, or maybe a little time asking your spouse to work with you on this is not vanity. It's just a fact of life. We're snapping pictures these days, so we need to be ready. So as far as homework, I suggest you spend a little bit of time, first of all, discovering which side is your better side. We all have one. <laughs> um, so is your right side, your left side? I don't know. So maybe spend some time in front of the mirror, but also ask your husband or a close friend or a sister or a mother or maybe even your daughter. <laughs> ask someone which is your best side. Practice then turning your face just slightly to that side, not completely of course, but just slightly to that side when someone picks up a camera or their phone. But also you're gonna to want to spend some time practicing some of the other tips that I'm gonna be sharing. Tip number two is add a little lipstick. So even if you don't have on a full face of makeup that day, maybe you've been outside, you know, doing yard work and then suddenly someone wants to snap a picture or maybe you've been hiking and you didn't wear a full face of makeup, still carry some lipstick with you. If you're on the ski slopes, put on your chapstick, put on some lipstick. <laughs> Just having that splash of color on your face is really going to help you stand out. It's going to accent your smile. It's going to go a long ways. Now, if you do have time to put on more makeup, some of the other suggestions I have for your makeup are to spend some time shaping your brows. Uh, make sure you put on some mascara to add a little light around your eyes. Maybe add a, just a little powder to your nose or your cheeks, your forehead to tone down the shine too. Tip number three is to look for the light. You know, daylight, just good outdoor light is gonna always be your best source of lighting for photos. But if maybe if you're inside, if you can kind of look towards a window uh, as some natural light, that's really going to help. Now, we're not always the one that's in charge of, you know, setting up the photo op, are we? But if you can, if you can say to the person who's taking the picture, the photographer, hey, let's look for some good light. That's just a good idea. Lighting makes a world of difference. 
You don't necessarily want to be looking head on into the sun. That can be too harsh, but I also encourage you not to be in the shadows. You don't want to be just darkened with a lot of sun behind you. So the best time actually to take pictures is in the early morning as the sun is rising and also what we call the golden hour, those last 45, 30 minutes or so as the sun is going down. That's when the, the light is just really nice and soft and amber. That's a great time to take some good pictures outside, but just look for some good natural lighting that's not harsh on you. Tip number four is to relax. I know, easier said than done, right? <laughs> We're already kind of hyped up just because someone pulled out their phone or their camera. But honestly, if we are tense, if we're anxious, if we are feeling tight because of taking pictures, it's going to show on the camera. You're going to look disengaged. You're going to look angry. You're gonna look uptight. So it's really important to do your best to relax. Even when James and I are shooting photos for the blog or for the, the video, the YouTube channel here, there are times when I start getting tense as we go. And I have found that if I just take a few deep breaths and exhale, that alone can relax me significantly. But another thing that relaxes me is just absolutely to laugh, <laughs> just to laugh a little. And that just kind of helps me to tone down. Sometimes just taking a deep breath, pulling my shoulders up and then letting them back. Just thinking some pleasant thoughts, thinking this is fun, this is my family, these are my friends, and just relax. It really is going to be important when you're taking your pictures. Number five is to create some angles with your body. Now, if you're the only one in the picture, then that's probably a little easier than when you're with a group. But once again, the, the point here is not to like look completely angular. You don't want to look like you're posing necessarily, but if you'll just turn your body, if you maybe turn your hips a little bit and then turn your body, your shoulders back around to almost squared with the camera, that alone will look so much more interesting than just st standing straight on like I'm doing right now. When we stand straight on like I am right now, we can begin to look very blobular <laughs> in a photo. If I just have my hands down to my side and I'm just standing here and I take a picture, I'm just gonna kinda look like a blob. But just turning a little bit, maybe moving my shoulders to the front, maybe relaxing one hip a little bit, that will change everything. So that's one of those things for homework is spend some time in front of the mirror, creating some angles with your body. You can do that by putting a hip out. You can do that by just putting a shoulder out a little bit. You can do it with just an elbow. Uh, you can do it by you know lifting your hand up like this and kind of raking through your hair. All sorts of ways to kind of create some angles. That's some of that homework I suggested before in tip number one. Tip number six is, very like number five, is to create some space. So as you're creating those angles, also create some space. Boy, this is the tip that James is like constantly harping on me as we are shooting for the blog. And you can do that, of course, with an elbow out a little bit. You can do this by holding an object, you know, just moving your hands a little bit. Sometimes I just hang my arms even down or just get them away from my body a little bit and then drop them again. You can do that with your legs. You can cock a knee out a little bit. You can hold your hand up around your hair again, like I said. You can even do this, of course, when you're sitting. Even when you're sitting, you can create those angles and you can create some space. So when you're posing for a photo, whether you're doing it with a group or by yourself, just be thinking angles and space. Now. One big warning though, this does not mean that everybody in your little group of friends needs to turn to one side and put your hand on your elbow and look like a rocket. <laughs> don't do that this Christmas, okay? Okay, don't do that. Instead, create various angles. So if you see your friends doing this, then you maybe do something a little different. You know, just, just create some different angles or some different space. Another way you can do that, of course, is to turn in a little bit and maybe touch one person, or you could turn back to back with somebody, just those angles and space. But once again, we're not the Rockettes. We're not trying to create that kind of a look. Another thing you can do as you are thinking about creating angles and space, boy, this is something I do a lot, is when you get your next Talbots or Chico's or J. Jill catalog, 
study those. Those ladies are masters. Obviously, that's their profession. Their profession is creating angles and space, <laughs> and they are really good at it. So kind of look at how they do it. They generally look very natural. I noticed that in most of those, those particular catalogs that I just mentioned are kind of, they pose like a lifestyle posing, and that's what you're going to be wanting to do this holiday season. So look at those and see the different ways that they do it, and then mimic those in a mirror and just kind of get used to it. I promise you, this is not vain. You can do this homework. It's good. It's a good thing. Tip number seven is to check your posture. Now, most of us don't practice very good posture most of the time anyhow. Shame on us. We really need to do better about that. It can take several years off of your appearance. So we definitely want to do that. But especially when you're taking photos, here is the little practice that I almost always do and I think is so helpful, is I lift my shoulders up high. I push them to the back so that they are in line with my, my rest of my spine, my hips, and then I gently lower them. Now, my posture really is like it should be. I can also think of like if I had a string going all the way through my body and somebody was pulling that string up, and I do that a lot too when we're out taking photos, I just try to lift my whole body up and then I strike my pose in this elongated feel. It's amazing. I bet I gain an inch in my height <laughs> when I just think to lift up a little bit. So I think that will slenderize and it will also just create better lines in, in your overall appearance. It will take some weight off <laughs> and it will just, it'll just create a better picture. So really, before you do the angles, before you do the space, get your posture good then strike those angles and you'll see a world of difference. Tip number eight, do something with your hands. This is probably like my biggest conundrum all the time when we're taking photos because I've learned that if I do something with my hands, it helps to create those angles and create that space. So of course you can use your pocket, put your hand in your pocket, that creates that nice angle, gives you a place to put your hands besides just at the side of your body. You can of course brush your hair back a little. You don't have to look like a vixen. <laughs> you can just do it very naturally like that. You can maybe touch the collar or touch the, your elbow is another nice thing to do, but you also, especially if you're posing with other people, you can touch one of your friends on her, her shoulder or her elbow. You can touch the person beside you on their shoulder. You could also hold something, especially at Christmas. Here's some great ideas for what to hold. You could hold a Christmas present. You can hold an ornament. You can hold a poinsettia. You could hold a coffee cup. That's one of my favorites is just to grab a coffee cup. So really any of those things would be a great thing just to keep handy and it would look really authentic and it looks like you're in the moment. And I think you'll find that it creates a really nice picture. Tip number nine is to look away. So if, if it's just you in the photo, maybe you and your husband are out touring a town and he wants to take your picture in front of a, a pretty park or something, then definitely take some photos looking straight at the camera because that's more engaging. You're really gonna engage with the camera and with whoever's looking at the picture that way. But to create a, a, a nice picture, let's say maybe you're in front of something and really you're taking a picture of this waterfall, right? But you're gonna be in it because it creates a more interesting look that way. If you're looking off to the side here, it really kind of makes a prettier picture, maybe something that you might even want to frame. So you don't have to take all of your pictures looking head on at the camera. You can also look over here, snap, snap, and that's a really nice shot, especially if you remember which of your sides is the best one. <laughs> Likewise, if you're in a group of people, of course, you can look at each other. You could engage with each other. I, I think that's really lovely because what that does is it captures the, the feel of, of the event, right? If you're at a family reunion or a Christmas party with friends, if you all kind of are looking at each other or maybe some of you are looking at each other and some are looking at the camera, it looks very genuine, it looks joyful, it intrigues the person who's looking at the picture and draws them in, makes them wonder, hey, I wonder what it was like to be there. It looks so fun. Number 10, I really think this is my favorite tip. This is the one that I try to practice in all of my pictures. And, and you know, I do kind of get compliments that my smile usually looks good. And I've never thought of myself as having a great smile, but this is something I do. I try to make sure I start my smile with my eyes. 
And I want to encourage you to do that. Start your smile with your eyes. And what I mean by that is to literally start your smile with your eyes. So do this, don't even smile with your mouth, but start it with your eyes and then allow, give permission to your mouth to join in. So watch me do this. I'm gonna do it again. Did you see how I didn't start with my mouth, I started with my eyes. Now watch me this time start with my mouth. <laughs> if I start with my mouth, sometimes my eyes never even join in. But what we really love, we love a smile that starts with the eyes because you can tell the difference. It's a smile that's genuine and it's joyful. So I encourage you to start your smile with your eyes. Tip number 11 kind of piggybacks on the last one, and that is to do what I call the happy squint. So this, this happy squint is the I am so happy I'm just about to burst smile. So it looks kind of like this. So there is a little bit of a squint. It's that full, full face smile, but you really get those crinkles in your eyes. We all have them, especially as we're over 50. Go ahead and let that shine and let it show how happy you are. <laughs> tip number 12 is to laugh it up. <laughs> My dad learned this tip somewhere along the way and he always does this when he's posing for photos. The trick is you gotta stop laughing at some point. <laughs> But I find it works for me too. If I, you know, if we're in, especially in a group, I think it's so good to laugh a little. Uh, sometimes even when James and I are just taking shots for the website, um, I'll just, he, he'll, he sees that I'm getting tense and he'll say, just laugh a little. And I, <laughs> and then when you settle in, you really have a genuine smile and it helps relax you. That laughter is a great thing. Now my bonus tip is, and I probably should have said this earlier, it has to do with your face. Like, you know, we've talked about your posture and creating angles and creating space, but boy, your face, that is where you're trying to capture the attention anyhow, right? I'm not saying you're trying to hog the limelight, but I'm saying that's, that's what people are looking for in pictures. We're looking at faces. So you wanna make sure that your face is angled correctly at the camera. So you can, like I said, choose your best side and, and angle that side a little bit. But also what you wanna do is you wanna pull your face up. You don't wanna, you, don't wanna okay, you definitely don't wanna do this. You get that double chin thing that I definitely have because I inherited it. And if I gain even a pound, I have more. <laughs> so you don't wanna do that, okay? Then you get that double chin thing. But you want to lift your head up and then you want to lower your chin just a little bit. So you're going to make, you may feel like you're kind of lowering your head a little bit, but this is definitely the best angle for most of us when we're taking a picture. So you don't want to look down at the camera. You don't want to look up at it. You want to look straight on at it. And you're going to kind of feel a little sultry even when you're sticking your head up and then lowering that chin just a little bit. In fact, you've probably heard photographers say that to you, to just lower that chin just a little bit. All right, those are my 13 tips. It was 12 and a bonus. So that you can look great in photos this holiday season. Let me know if those work for you. I hope they do. If you have any questions, let me know that too. And don't forget, you have homework. All right, ladies, I'll see you again really soon. Bye now. Thank you.